What's up? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about Disney World and my annual pass. So I wanted to kind of talk with you guys a little bit about is the out of state annual pass worth it? Um, talk about the savings that we experienced and we had and all the perks that we got and whether it was worth it or not for us. So if you guys want to see that and see if the annual pass is worth it for you, then just keep watching. Okay, so I've got my ears on, got my ears on in the background, got my pops, got my Haunted Mansion shirt, I've got everything ready to go. So first off, I want to talk about these ears for a minute because they are by Mouse Fitter Ears and they are the Baby Yoda Snacky Snacks um, with the sequined sparkly bogum pink. Um, love them. Love, love, love them. And I really love her ears. They're really comfortable. They're fun to wear throughout the day. I have this pair and I also have a Marie pair and a Safari pair. Um, and it's not going to be the end of it. The only problem is that I ran out of space on my ear holder. So we're talking about annual passes and a couple caveats, disclaimers, etc. for it. So I bought my annual pass certificate before everything shut down last year. So when everything shut down because of COVID, they quit selling the annual passes and there's only, I think, two ways you can get them now. So if you are an annual pass holder and you have a child who just turned three and now requires a ticket, you can buy an annual pass for them. And I think also if you had one that expired in the last year, I think they allow you to like, kind of like petition them to reactivate it basically or renew it um i could be wrong if there are other circumstances or whatever let me know um i did make notes for myself so that i didn't forget to tell you guys anything so like i said i bought it we were originally going to go last summer i bought the annual pass everything closed trip got canceled so i never activated it so when you buy an annual pass you get essentially get the certificate and then you actually have to go to guest services to activate it. And it's not considered your day one until you do that. So I held on to it until we went in April. And at that point, the day we got there, I went and activated it and we were golden and I'm good until April of 2022. So that is how that all works. Um, so if you have one that hasn't been activated, it's not a problem. It's not gonna necessarily expire. Um, it was actually kind of funny because mine did have an expiration date of 2030. So you had 10 years to buy it, to activate and use it. So something else to note, <clears throat> excuse me, is there are seven tiers of annual pass. Now we live in Texas, previously Pennsylvania. So we have never been able to buy anything but the top two. So all of the bottom ones are for Florida residents, seniors, those people. Um, the Platinum and Platinum Plus passes are the only ones that out-of-state guests can buy at this time um, or when they were available last year. So the Platinum Pass got you obviously a year worth of entry, no blackout dates, um, you were able for room discounts, uh, you got the Memory Maker for free included, um, mer the Merchant Food discounts, the exclusive merchandise, the free park parking, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then the discounts on recreation things, like if you want to rent bikes or anything, tours and the parties. So the Platinum Plus includes all that plus the water parks. Um, we're not really crazy water park people, so we didn't necessarily felt like we needed to do that. It was an extra couple hundred for the one pass for that. So we just went with the Platinum Pass and uh, so we'll talk about and see if it was worth it for us. So I do want to talk about parking at the parks. So if you have an annual pass, it's included for free and you can do that. But if you're staying on property and you're staying at one of the resorts and you're paying the resort parking fee, you can park at the parks for free to begin with. So if I'm paying the $25, $30 a night to park at the Caribbean Beach Resort, which is where we were at, and I want to drive to Magic Kingdom, I don't have to pay the um, park parking fee because I already paid it at the resort. So it's worth it if you're staying off property or if you're a local, but you know, it kind of washes itself out if you're staying on property for that. So um, like I said, the platinum ones have no blackout dates. 
other passes do like there's some that are weekday only after 4 p.m things like that and um so we only had to worry about if we were going to get a reservation or not so get kind of breaking down some of the things so we actually stayed at caribbean beach resort which we were originally going to stay at pop centric because I mean, we were really only there to sleep we maybe have one pool day and um that was that but when we were factoring in all of the numbers and everything, they came out with an annual pass holder uh, room discount that was specifically for annual pass holders. So Disney always has deals going on, whether it's, you know, stay two nights, get a third night free or free dining or, you know, all of those different things. But they also throughout the year will release annual pass holder specific discounts. So the week we went, you could get 25% off a of pop like a value resort, which we would have stayed a pop, 30% uh, off of the moderates and 35% off of the deluxe resorts. Now, one of the perks with room discounts with the annual pass is you get up to three rooms per reservation, which is really awesome because we were going with friends of ours and we were actually able to give them our AP discount for their room as well. So when we were factoring and doing all of the numbers, we were able to save a thousand dollars off of the room at caribbean beach and it ended up being about the same as if we would not have had a discount at pop century so we felt like that was a savings of a thousand dollars right out the gate because we budgeted and planned to not have the discount because um, sometimes you go during a time where there's just not a discount so you can't always count on it but we ended up paying the exact same amount as if we would have stayed at Pop Century. So I, that was a thousand dollars saved to begin with. Um, you also get 10 to 15 percent off of dining on the annual pass. So for standard, it is table service 10 percent off. There's a couple like the Edison uh, Paradiso 37, Maria and Enzo's, and Enzo's Hideaway at Disney Springs that you get 15 percent off with an annual pass. Joffrey's Coffee, you get 20% off, which was phenomenal because staying at Caribbean Beach Resort, we were right at the Skyliner and I got my morning coffee. Um, there's a couple non-table service places like Blaze, um, Sprinkles, Wetzel's Pretzels, Earl of Sandwich, um, a couple of those little places that you get the discount as well, but they're not, they're considered quick service. But in general, you don't get the discount for quick service it's just table service which was completely fine because we ate at about one table service every single day uh, you also get 20 percent off of i i would say most merchandise not all merchandise that you can buy on property so third parties like if you're at disney springs and you go to like under armor or uniqlo they don't uh do the discount and the countries in epcot that are run by their specific countries which i found to be japan and china because they are, those countries actually run their pavilions they don't accept the discount either which again it's fine because it is such a small few far between type thing so kind of breaking it down a little bit so we'll break it down and then we'll see if it was worth it for us in the long run so first things first is to buy my annual pass last year now remember i bought this in early 2020 whenever they go to bring them back the price is most likely going to go up i mean it's disney prices go up on the regular so i bought it for 1272 dollars, which i'll put here and then we saved the 30 percent off of our room so a thousand dollars and i'll list everything as we go and have kind of like a running total at the bottom um, $1,000 off of our room, but then we also got the $1,000 off of our friend's room. Now, I'm not going to count that towards our totals, but it was just a really awesome perk to be able to, you know, stay at a nicer hotel than a value and that they were also able to get the discount. So on merchandise and things that we bought, we didn't buy more than we normally would have. I mean, when we go to Disney, we take a check bag, a carry-on, and like, you know, a backpack. And... Uh, there are some things that we did buy that were a little bit extra like for example since we just moved we are trying to decorate one of our bathrooms so I did buy a little bit of extra artwork but what I did was I bought postcards and I'm going to frame them so postcards aren't crazy expensive either so off of all of our merch and like I said 
apart from those couple postcards to decorate the bathroom, we didn't buy more than we normally would have. We saved $396.24. So almost $400 off of the normal merchandise that um, we bought. On food, we saved $106.40. Now keep in mind, that's for the four of us. So for two, I would say that would be $53.20. Um, and then again, we also get the memory maker included. So to do kind of the math to see if it worked out for us or not, what I did was I went to both Undercover Tourist and the Disney website, priced out what the ticket value would have been for the six day park ticket that we used and the range was between 550 and 580 so i averaged that um whenever i averaged the two out i got 570. so um i basic and that's a, including all the taxes and fees and everything that would be added so that was the the 550 to 580 is the base price plus taxes and fees so that's how i got to the 570 average for a ticket so was the big question is was it worth it so we start off and we take the 1272 minus 570 minus 169 for the memory maker minus 396.24 for the merchandise minus 53.20 for the dining and then minus the 1000 for the hotel discount and we actually ended up saving $916.44. So we came out almost $1,000 ahead with all of the savings. So was it worth it? I think so, because not only do we save on this trip, but if we go before April of next year, which we're planning a weekend in the next couple of months here, I don't have to pay for a ticket. We'll get the food discount, we'll get the merch discount, and if we play our cards right we might get a room discount on top of it all so if you're thinking about going for i would say what really worked out for us was the fact that we were there for nine ten days so we were there for slightly over a week um but we also did end up going whenever there was an opportunity to get the room discount so if you are kind of planning and that's where you're headed planning wise, I would say it is 110% worth it. Um, you know, when we came back and we were looking at everything, we both came to the conclusion that it's worth keeping my annual pass active for the foreseeable future, just because we go at least once a year. There's been a couple years where we've gone twice and we kind of wish we did this sooner because, you know, we would have saved all of these discounts that much quicker and that much sooner than we did. So it's definitely worth it. I highly encourage you to look into it when it comes back and when it's available um, and see if it's worth it for you and your trip. So if you have any questions about the annual pass though, or Disney or anything like that, I am more than happy to answer any of those questions. Um, just let me know in the comments below or you know, shoot me an email. But otherwise, I hope you guys like this. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.